Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will continue to learn about Sublime Text. This video is all about usability. There's two parts. In the first half of the video, we will look at minor settings that we can tweak to improve usability. And in the second half of the video, we will learn how to split our editing window into columns and or rows so that we can edit multiple files at the same time. All right, let's begin by tweaking a few preferences in our user settings file. So to pull open that file, we look for the preferences menu in Sublime Text and then click settings user. All right, the first change that I will make is that I want Sublime Text to highlight the current line or row of text that my cursor is on. So if you look very closely, you can see my cursor moving up and down with the arrow keys on my keyboard. Wouldn't it be nice if that entire line for the entire width of the window lit up? So to do that, in this settings file, we will create a new line, high light line, and we simply set this to true. Oops. Save this file. And now it's subtle, but if you look very closely, you can see that as I use my arrow keys to move up and down, the entire line has a highlight. Excellent. Now the next change that I would like to make has to do with the cursor or caret itself. By default, the cursor is a bit hard to see. It's only one pixel thick. And considering how important the cursor is, I think it should be easier to see it at a glance when we look at our screen. So let's bump up the cursor a bit on a new line. Caret extra width. Let's set this to five and then save. All right, now if that's a bit too bulky for you, you can lower this to four or three or two. Let's try three. I think that's a happy medium. We can also increase the height of the caret or cursor. So caret extra top, two. Caret extra bottom, two. Oops, save. And it's subtle, but if you look very closely, you can see that the cursor is a bit taller than you might expect. And you can adjust these values to fine tune them to your liking. All right, the next change that I want to make has to do with line height or the space between lines. Now we often bump up the line height to improve readability on our web pages. Why not do the same thing for our text editor? So let's add a new line, line padding, bottom one, you could try any value you would like, line padding top one, save. I think that little bit of extra space makes things easier to read. You might disagree or you might want even more space. So in that case, use a larger value than one. All right, the next change that I want to make has to do with the sidebar. When I look at the sidebar, I want to immediately know if something is a folder or a file. Now we do have these folder icons, but wouldn't it be nice if the folder names were bold? So let's create a new line. Bold folder labels. Set this to true, hit save. And we now have bold folder names in the sidebar. All right, so that wraps up the settings that I wanted to tweak. Now let's change gears and talk about layout or window splitting. Let's close this settings file. All right, so let's imagine that we are working on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and we have a reasonably large monitor. Now, instead of simply having the three different files, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript open as different tabs, what if we wanted to have them all open at once? Well. In the Sublime Text menu, head up to View, Layout, and we have many different options here. So let's choose Columns 3. Now I can simply drag these different tabs into the different window panes. So I now have three different files open at once. It's very easy to work on them. And you don't have to have three equally sized windows. If you simply drag, you can customize the distribution. Now, I won't bore you by showing you all of the different layouts available. You can experiment on your own, but before I close out this lesson, there is one neat feature that I wanna show you. So let me set this back to two columns. Let's imagine that this index.html file 
is really long. It's a really large file. And let's imagine that I want to be editing somewhere near the top of the file. And I also want to be editing somewhere near the bottom of the file. And I don't want to have to keep scrolling up and down. Well, you can actually open the same file in multiple panes. So while I am in this file, I can click File, New View into File. You can see that creates another tab and then I can just drag that tab into this pane, scroll down to the bottom. So now I can be simultaneously making changes at the top of the file and at the bottom. And I think that's a neat little trick, opening the same file multiple times, getting a new view into a file. That will bring this lesson to a close. I hope you feel like you learned something. We have only scratched the surface of different things you can do to customize your Sublime text. So if you're curious for more, Google is your friend as always. Have fun and I will see you in the next lesson. The lesson you just watched is a part of my web development workflow course. The course covers Sublime Text, SAS architecture and organization, Git, Grunt, Bower, and more. And we use all of this to build a modern website together. The lessons that are about a single tool will be available for free on YouTube. And the lessons where we really sink our teeth into something or see how two or three tools are coming together or maybe write a bit of custom CSS or JavaScript together will be part of the premium course. If you want to be notified when the premium course is released, you can sign up via the description for this video. Or if you're watching this video in the future, the course has been released and you can find a heavily discounted coupon code in the description for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.